Good morning, everybody. February 15th, 2018, 6.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, we are going to be talking about the cyclones again today in this video. But first, a real quick look at current temperatures in the U.S. The Northeast will be getting a couple warm days, but we will be seeing a small to moderate possible snow issue going on over the weekend. More along the uh, northeast coastal states, uh, still need some more time to watch to see how that develops. Uh, we do have some big fog issues going on right where my cursor is, right, be right below Lake Michigan here, uh, which could last throughout the entire day. We have major fog going on down in the areas of Florida, all the way from Louisiana, the coasts, all the way through Florida. Um, at least throughout this morning. So those of you that live in those areas, please be aware of that if you are not already. Um, again, warmer temperatures uh, for the next couple days, but we do have another cold front that is moving through that could bring some snow. I'm not positive on any major snow systems. I do know we are looking at a one to three inch issue over the weekend, um, again, along these coastal areas here. So I'll dig into that um, over the weekend, which I have free to make videos for you guys. But we are also checking out Cyclone Gita once again. Uh, we are at 105 knots right now, which is about 120 mile per hour winds. Um, the pressure is raising, which means the storm is getting weaker. Now, this is a good thing. Obviously, we look for this in uh, the Atlantic hurricane season. We also have 91 Invest, which they have named Kelvin. Um, Australia is calling this storm, they think this is going to be one of their more significant storms of the season. Now, I'm basing that off an article I'm reading here from an AU website. Tropical Cyclone Kelvin's arrival preceded by strong winds and heavy rain in Kimberley. That is Kimberley, Australia. Now, this is the system. Um, it took this path. This is currently where it is now. They're expecting it to hug the coast and then dip down into, uh, it looks like, Port Headland and then uh, Tom Price and then Newman down into the south areas of Australia. Now, the reason they're saying this is going to be a very significant storm is because of the amount of rain it's expected to drop. Now, with that said, uh, they said there could be wind gusts of 150 kilometers um, and could bring up to 600 millimeters of rain, which is pretty crazy. So that got me thinking about some of Australia's worst cyclones since the 70s. So if any of you want to come check this website out, I'll leave this in the description box here. Uh, some of these uh, storms look pretty devastating. These are Australian cyclones. Uh, we had Yassi in 2011, which was a big one. Uh, there are some with pictures. A lot of these are from the 70s. Again, this goes back into history. Um, so just to give you an idea of how significant cyclone season is for the continent of Australia, uh, pretty crazy. And that is divided into two different oceans. So some of Australia deals with the Indian Ocean, and then the east side of Australia de deals with the South Pacific. So very interesting website to check out. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at Gita for right now because Gita is threatening uh, Norfolk Island, which is right in between, I guess you could cut the space in between North Island of New Zealand and New Caledonia, which is right around here. It may wrap around it, but uh, that's what we're hoping for. Uh, but if any of these bands come anywhere near the island, they will certainly feel this storm. Now... On this chart here, Tropical Tidbits, here is the current projection for where this thing's going to go. Now again, it is getting dangerously close to the south ends of New Caledonia, and there is an island that extends off the southern area here. Um, if you remember me talking yesterday about there's some sort of nuclear plant or military base that is a little inland, and then there's a little uh, island off the end of New Caledonia. In fact, let's just look at it real quick. Here's the island I'm talking about here, which could take, um, there is an airport, obviously, there is a lot of different bays, I'm sure there's population, obviously, if there's an airport, um, so as of right now, if anywhere takes the significant brunt of this storm, which they have marked right here, uh, which is currently passing over Hunter Island Volcano, Underwater Volcano, and then Matthew Island um, I guess maybe if they're calling them an islands, they are exposed islands. 
Maybe not. Maybe they're... Okay, there's an island there. There's the underwater volcano. So, uh, yes, Matthew Island is also in the path of this storm. As I zoom up here, we also have some crazy earthquake activity going on. It's almost like these earthquakes are popping up right behind this storm. I'm not saying there's any relation to that whatsoever. But um, once again, Gita is right here. It is going to hook down just underneath... Uh, New Caledonia, hopefully not making any land interaction, and then here we have Norfolk, Norfolk Island, um, but it looks that this storm wants to wrap this way and then come straight down towards New Zealand, so hopefully that leaves this island out of the way, but on Ventu Sky, I'm going to show you that the North Island here may be taking a pretty big hit from this storm, and we're looking at 70 plus mile an hour gusts. Um, at landfall on the coasts here so this is still a very significant storm even though the pressure's dropping the reason for that is because of the cooler water it's entering as it uh, moves along its trip again this is uh, Kelvin which is on the other side of Australia right now uh, these are pictures from Tonga from Gita and here's Ventus Sky. Now this is what I want you to pay attention to. So here is that Kelvin system we're talking about that is going to hug the coast and then come down into the uh, west part of Australia. This is the Indian Ocean. Here is the South Pacific. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and you're going to see another system develop. It's going to come right out of this area just as Gita uh, hits New Zealand. We see another system come out from this way. Uh, which we may be having to focus on a little later. So I'm going to move through time here. This would be the 16th, and I'm at 10 meters above the ground right now. So we are looking at 85 to 90 mile an hour winds. Um, as this thing passes underneath New Caledonia, here is the 17th. And you can see it does this hook this way, and it wants to just, it, it just seems to want to come right into the North Island or right into the gap here hopefully wrapping around Norfolk Island, which is a very small place, would take a lot of damage from this storm if it does hit it. It's almost, a, this, is, this turn seems to be getting wider to me, could almost affect the areas of East um, Australia, so we need to keep an eye on that as well. That's a new sight for me. This thing did have more of a cut in its pattern uh, when I was looking at it just an hour ago, but we can see by Tuesday the 20th, let me back up now to hourly, and we're going to see exactly when this thing wants to touch New Zealand. Let's move to 7 a.m. This would be Eastern Standard Time, so you can do the conversion yourself. This would be 1 p.m., 4 p.m. So around 4 p.m., we're looking at 70, 80. These are 10 meters off the ground, so 80 mile an hour winds. And now it looks to be a little south of the North Island, so more of a hit on the South Island of New Zealand. But guys, if we're talking these wind speeds here, 70 plus mile an hour, some of this hitting 80, that is very significant. There is no getting around it. Whether this is uh, considered cyclone or not, these are cyclone speeds. Um, I brought this table up to give you a comparison. Um, we're at 100, uh, 105 knots right now as it uh, is about to pass under New Caledonia. That is equivalent to a Category 3 hurricane. Um, if we're in the 70 to 80 mile an hour range, we're talking about a Category 1 hurricane um, hitting the South and North Island of New Zealand. Now we're still about four or five days out from that, so this may shift up or down. So again, anyone that lives in New Zealand, in the North Island or the South Island, this is what to expect in the next five to six days. Now, this has not changed much as far as where this thing wants to go, which is significant because these storms tend to take this type of path. And I'm not sure if that's because of the different land masses. I'm sure it has something to do with the winds up above. Um, if you were to change this to a higher altitude, let's say 500 meters, you get a better idea of steering winds, and you can see how winds come from the uh, the east to west here. They dip down, and it's almost like this this uh, whipping board. So any of these storms that form out in this area, they come down, they come up. That's why we had to deal with Tonga getting hit, and then Fiji, and then they come down over past uh, the under part of New Caledonia, and then they just come straight down into New Zealand. So New Zealand is just in one of those spots during cyclone season that, especially if they form out here, 
chances are it's going to follow this path um, with these high-level winds steering it uh, without any shear wind br uh, breaking it down. When you have shear winds, those are 30, 40,000 feet in the air. Those could rip these storms apart before they get to certain land masses, but that, uh, that does not seem to be the case for um, Cyclone Gita here. Now, we do need to keep an eye on this um, even afterwards because as I move into the 20th, let's change this back to 10 meters above the ground. Now, you're going to notice once this storm um, passes through New Zealand, we're into the 21st. Here is the 22nd, and now we have this system that just peaks out through here, and then watch what happens through the 23rd and 24th. This thing gains strength here, and it seems to want to stick to, uh, well not so much stick to, but it is closer to the northeast coast of Australia. So again, Australia has two different oceans to deal with during cyclone season. We ha They have the, uh, the Indian Ocean over here, and then we have the South Pacific here, and then we have uh, that invest Cal that they have named uh, Kelvin, which is forming and riding the coast currently right now. Um, the reason for that being so significant, even though it's only 20 knots, which is about 23 to 24 mile per hour winds, it's going to dump a ton of rain in these areas. Uh, we'll jump to Google Earth again real quick and show you where those areas actually are. Uh, it's about right around here. So this thing is going to ride the coast of... Australia, and then it's going to come down right into this area here. Um, the Her Hermishley Range, I guess this is a mountain range here. I'm sorry guys, my geography is off. I will and am getting better at that. Um, but Australia just has literally cyclones all around it right now. And if I bring you to this earthquake chart, I just want to show you. Um, we've had activity, literally a 5.0 earthquake in Tonga. This is two days after Gita has basically decimated the island. They're still cleaning up. They will be cleaning up for a long time. And then we had an earthquake yesterday in Fiji. So um, no comparison. I'm not saying that these uh, cyclones are causing earthquakes. It's highly unlikely there is a big fault line here. That is likely the reason for these earthquakes. But it's just interesting how the storm has passed these two areas and now we have an earthquake uh, which took place overnight or early this morning in Tonga and then yesterday on Valentine's Day we had this 5.0 in Fiji which just got the south end hit with Gita. So let's see what else I have for you here. That is Tonga. We went through Ventu Sky. Now as far as the Gulf goes for uh, the Atlantic Ocean guys we are heating up quick. These are above average temperatures. Um, some of these areas are already 80 degrees just around Jamaica and you can see this water beginning to bleed into the Gulf. And as you see this line here, you're going to see these temperatures rise up in this area. Obviously the northeast, um, right off the coast, sea surface temperatures are still very cold. That is normal for this time of year. But we're talking about storm formation and all you need is that 80 degree weather or the 80 degree surface temperatures and we have it right now as we speak. So here we go. This is the KLY um, STRLN9 water temperature chart for today. This was 5.07 a.m., 81 degrees, and then these oranges are 80, so we have 80 degree water bleeding into the Gulf. The Gulf will be heating up uh, sooner than later, and that's why I've been making posts on Instagram and Twitter about um, how early this season is going to start for the Atlantic part of it. Here's another chart giving you an idea of the water temperatures and also this is a good way to show you why these storms that we're talking about right now like Gita once they make that southern hook they start to widen out because the water's cooler here so you get a wider wind base they do weaken but it covers a bigger surface area and we're talking 80 mile an hour winds at contact um, whether it's the North Island or the South Island of New Zealand so please anyone in New Zealand prepare for this storm it is coming one way or another it will make uh, some sort of landfall in New Zealand um, we're just looking and watching the, um, the speeds at which this is going to happen and as of right now we are pushing uh, close to 80 mile an hour winds at landfall in the next five days I want to say that could change give or take 24 hours which is why I uh, post on this daily um, that's all I have for you for now guys I will do more local weather again the Northeast will have warmer weather today and possibly tomorrow but then we're 
going to be going back into a cold front, unfortunately, which may bring some snow. And then shortly after, again, uh, Gita passes through New Zealand. We have another system projected to pop out here, and we're going to see what happens with this one as it looks like it's heading once again towards New Caledonia after hit riding the northeast coast of Australia. So Australia, you are very busy. Hopefully this storm Kelvin over here doesn't bring too much rain, but they're expecting it to be very significant. So Australia, New Zealand, New Caledonia, you're all on watch. Also Norfolk Island. That is it for now, guys. I hope you have a great day, and I will bring you more videos this afternoon or later on this weekend. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.